Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And like always, we're going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And let's get started. Who was Aeneas in the Bible? Who was Aeneas in the Bible? Aeneas was a man living in the town of uh, Lida, which is uh, situated on the coastal plain about 22 miles northwest of Jerusalem. Aeneas had suffered from paralysis for eight years until Simon Peter came to town. And uh, the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 32 to 35 gives the account, and I quote, The Bible says, as Peter traveled about the country, he went to visit the Lord's people who lived in Lida. There, he found a man named Aeneas, who was paralyzed and had been bedridden for eight years. Aeneas, Peter said unto him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. End of quote. Immediately, Aeneas got up, and those who lived in Lida and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Hmm. Friends, we understand. The name Aeneas is a Greek and uh, is a Greek name, and may imply that the man was either a Gentile or a Hellenistic Jew, that is, uh, one who spoke uh, Greek and had adopted also Greek customs. In all the accounts of healings done by Jesus and the apostles, only a few times is the name of the healed person mentioned. So it may be significant that Aeneas is mentioned by name, even though his story comprises of only four verses. And there are several possible reasons for the mention of Aeneas' name. Some scholars uh, speculate that Aeneas' name was significant in that in this event, it prepared Peter to accept what God was about to reveal to him in a vision. As a law-keeping Jew, Peter had difficulty accepting that God's salvation was for everyone, Greeks and Hellenized Jews included, not just for Israel or those who kept the Mosaic law, Aeneas was most likely a believer since uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Acts 9 verse 32 that Peter had come to Lida to visit those who followed Jesus. So, by recognizing that Jesus wanted to heal this non-traditional Jew or possibly a Gentile, Peter was better prepared for the vision that Jesus would soon give him in a nearby uh, place called Joppa at the home of Simon the Tanner. Remember Acts chapter uh, 9 verse 43? And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a Tanner. You remember Simon a Tanner? And of course uh, the story is in uh, Acts chapter 10 of what really happened. Now another reason for Aeneas to be mentioned by name could be that the results of his healing were quite impactful. Not only was a paralyzed man healed, but uh, Acts chapter 9 verse 35 says that in all those who lived in Lida and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. That's a spectacular outcome. The evangelism of two villages would have been a source of encouragement for the first century church, suffering persecution and rejection. It seemed uh, Aeneas was a well-known person both as the paralyzed believer and uh, as the healed believer. And using his name may have simply been due to the fact that many of Luke's original readers knew who Aeneas was. Also consider this. Since Aeneas' name was given in the narrative, the story could be independently verified and proved reliable. 
the gospel of luke and the book of acts were two parts of luke's uh, writing in the prologue to his gospel luke explains that he had uh, carefully investigated everything from the beginning and then decided to write an orderly account so that his readers may know the satanity of things you have been taught luke 1 verse 3 to 4 now this is a account of someone called aeneas and this aeneas healing think about it it could be easily affirmed or denied by aeneas and all the residents of lida and sharon and their testimony could serve as helpful evidence to show up anyone's faith but god used aeneas to demonstrate his power to people who did not know him and the miraculous healing aeneas experience also validated for the town's people peter's claim to be an apostle second corinthians 12 verse 12 truly the signs of an apostle were brought among you in all patience in signs and wonders and mighty deeds Aeneas story reminds us that no one is too insignificant to be used in a mighty way by God. Aeneas may have lain on his mat for 8 years believing he could do nothing for the Lord, but the Lord chose him to be the catalyst for bringing his whole region to faith in Christ. If God could use a paralyzed man like Aeneas to accomplish much, he can so use each one of us. likewise and that's the end of our today's bible study lesson hope it was a blessing to you hope you've learned something and uh, remember you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family and please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new bible question If you like to get saved or you need to get a step by step order of salvation so that you can well preach to a friend or a family member or maybe you feel led to support our ministry please feel free to visit our website kithmwoki.com otherwise i hope to see you in the next one